M-I-N-N-E-S-O-T-A. -E -E Minnesota, Minnesota. Yay, Gophers. <laughs> oh, that's the spirit, Love isn't it. it? Let the madness begin. Gophers fans of all ages are ready for the men's team to play in the NCAA tournament. That's right. They are taking on number seven seed Louisville in just a few hours. Ken Erdahl is live in Des Moines, Iowa this morning, where Gophers fans are making themselves at home in Hawkeye country. I know you are an alum. This has got to be a great assignment, Kent. It's real, guys. This is, this is that magical morning when everyone's bracket is just perfectly clean and it's so nice. And as a Minnesota fan, yes, it's awesome. In fact, I just roll these days with the Minnesota pep band with me. I mean, look at this, guys. This is the picture, by the way, I'm gonna be taking for my gopher photo to submit for the contest. These guys are gonna be playing almost as much as the basketball team this weekend, really. You guys have a full schedule. This is Patrick here. He's, he rolls big, right? Yep. So what do you got going on today? Um, so we're playing now. We're going to play again in a few hours to send the team off to the stadium. Uh, we're going to go play at the official pregame party, and then we're going to go play at the game. So we got a packed day until at least 2 p.m. Yeah, a lot of events going on. Last night there were some events going on downtown, a lot of fans around. Goldie showed up. I think Goldie's getting his beauty sleep in, his or her gold, uh, beauty sleep in. Uh, but we are... Uh, just really excited for this. We haven't, we're gonna actually pencil this in from Minnesota all the way to the championship game, but we wanna give you a little taste of the music, right guys? Can we do that real quick? Here we go. Look at that. We did that all really nice for everyone at the hotel this morning. Wake this up, is the Paul. Minnesota Team Hotel. Thank it's you guys. It's okay. It's time to get up and start celebrating. Appreciate it, Kent. We'll check back with you in a half hour. <laughs> He's going to have a lot of fun. He is going to have a lot of friends, too, with yeah. the band playing. Well, the Gophers are flying under the radar this tournament. According to their coach, that's just the way they like it. They're not a beat your chest type of team. You know, they make a three, you're not going to see a bow and arrow or anything like that. And that's the way I like it. It's been a fun group to be around. Now will hopefully be fun to watch too. The Gophers are the 10th seed, Louisville a little higher at seven, and we're gonna keep you updated on the game throughout the day. Connect with us on air and online using your Care 11 mobile app. Well, happening now, St. Paul is under an emergency declaration as the city braces for a 10 foot rise in river levels. City leaders expect the Mississippi to reach flood stage by the weekend and forecast potential major flooding by next week. In South St. Paul, people are already filling sandbags and looking to volunteers to help. It's a similar situation in Stillwater. In just a few hours, a big effort starts there to try to hold off the high water. Ellery McArdle is there this morning. Yeah, good morning, guys. So starting at 11 o'clock, that's when you're going to see volunteers out here tackling these sand mounds behind me. They're going to fill it, be filling some 45,000 sandbags between today through Tuesday. And I was talking with the director of public works, and he says about 300 volunteers will be out here during those days helping out, all to try and keep the predicted high water out of the city. Now, also happening today, the city will start to build a temporary flood wall. They've been watching water levels closely and keeping in close contact with the National Weather Service. Service. I'm told that 89 feet is major flood stage for the St. Croix River in Stillwater, and the city says it was told that there's a 90% chance that the river will go over major flood stage by early April. Now, when I was talking with the Public Works Director, I also asked him, you know, when's the last time there was a major flood here? He said back in 2001. So, guys, just by the looks of the big operation, this big parking lot they have kind of closed off for the sandbagging operation, you can tell they are not taking any chances with the flood threat this year. And it's a good thing for the people who live there. Ellery, thank you for the update this morning. Chris? Here's your local morning rush. A heartbreaking update to the deaths of three people on the White Earth Reservation in northwest Minnesota. Based on the initial investigation, it appears to be a murder-suicide. The Ramsey County Medical Examiner says 28-year-old Emma LaRock shot herself and her 9- and 4-year-old children died by homicidal violence. Their bodies were found in a home in Becker County Monday. 
fire broke out at a historic grain exchange building in downtown Minneapolis Wednesday. Firefighters say they were able to put out the flames on the first floor quickly because the historical building had old marble structures that were able to contain the fire. No one was hurt and the cause is under investigation. An odd offer from a Minneapolis man during the city council meeting. If you would like to receive Crystal Lake Cemetery uh, as a gift, uh, from my family. We'll give it to you free of charge. Bill McCreevy owns a historic 140 acre cemetery in North Minneapolis, but he says it's cost him a lot to maintain and he's lost $300,000 on it each year for the last three years. City Council members we talked with say they're reluctant to take on a property that loses so much money. Chris, thank you. Developing this morning, New Zealand imposing a sweeping gun ban less than a week after a gunman opened fire at two mosques, killing 50 people. Every semi-automatic weapon used in the terrorist attack on Friday will be banned in this country. That ban includes all military-style semi-automatic weapons and assault rifles. The Prime Minister says she expects the new legislation to go into effect by April 11th. And Alicia is breaking down what this could mean for that country in this morning's Digital Dive. Hey, no, Lauren, right now New Zealand actually has fewer restrictions on rifles and handguns than a lot of other countries. In fact, believe it or not, handguns are more tightly controlled in New Zealand. So according to the Council of Licensed Firearm Owners, all gun owners in New Zealand, they must have a license, which they can get at age 16. Currently, you have to be 18 years old to have a semi-automatic weapon, and the weapons don't have to be registered with authorities. The majority of firearm owners in New Zealand are farmers and hunters, so just how many guns are there in that country? Well, according to that same report, there are about 1.5 million firearms owned in New Zealand legally and illegally, which is roughly 30 firearms per 100 people. And here in the U.S., according to gunpolicy.org, the rate is about 120 firearms per 100 people. We got more guns than people. So Australia Australia actually implemented a similar ban that New Zealand is implementing soon after a 1996 massacre took place there. And the country actually destroyed more than a million weapons. Thousands and thousands of people actually voluntarily turned in their weapons, but they saw a positive impact after that. Gun suicides down 4.8% per year. Gun related homicides were also down 5.5% per year and mass shootings altogether in the country of Australia have since that ban came down to zero. So it definitely had a very positive impact in terms of deaths. Yeah, it is fascinating to me how quickly New Zealand moved with this ban in a matter of a month. Right. They're going to get rid of these weapons. And in America, it's the third rail of our politics. For sure. Yeah, a different attitude, I mean, of the people mm -hmm. and whatnot, and different, you know, maybe constitutional rights and whatnot sure. as well. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's taking with Sven for the one thing weather. Yeah, we're looking at a nice day today. Uh, temperatures headed up to around 50 degrees, should have sunshine most of the day. And uh, we're headed up into even warmer territory for the weekend with more sunshine.